Dude, don't eat all the little smokies. You would like little smokies. I do. They taste delicious. Ha <laughs> ha, you eat wieners. Shut up. You're eating wieners right now. Yeah, but... Shut up! Enough. Go away. Can I at least get some food first? Get out of here. Let me talk to the other one. What did you say your name was? Uh, Picard, the Elven Ranger. Is that your real name? Well, it's real to me. Yeah, but what did your mother and father call you? Please, don't bring my parents into this. I just want to know your name. What's in a name, really? Call me Mr. Picklehead if it makes you feel better. Hey, guys! Picard wants us to call him Mr. Picklehead! I thought you were leaving! I forgot my tuna sandwich. You've had your chance, Jeremy. This is between me and Mr. Picklehead. Don't call me that. But you said, it's Jason, all right? My name's Jason. Okay, Jason. What brought you to this world of lies and demons? They aren't lies. They're stories of imagination and wonder. And what makes you more comfortable with these stories than the real world? It gives me a chance to escape the mundane inadequacy of the everyday without endangering myself or my colleagues by embarking on enterprises of similar stimulation. You speak words of evil, boy. Did you learn that from your D&D? &D? No, I, I learned that in school. Ah, you still attend school? You must be a recent acolyte of these satanic teachings, then. Huh? Uh, no, I've been playing D&D &D for about a year, just like the other guys. But you must admit you've been limiting yourself in the other aspects of your life since you started playing, correct? Not really. In fact, last month I started dating. My first girlfriend. She's a geek like you, though, right? Well, she's not really one of the popular girls, no, but she's not really a... I thought as much. She plays D&D &D too, then. Well, not yet, but I'm hoping I can get her to join us at our next game. Ah, uh -huh. Just as I suspected. This game is slowly taking control of every aspect of your life. So much so that you're allowing it to extend into the lives of your loved ones. No, not really. I just think it's a fun hobby and I'd like to share it with whoever I can. Spread the teachings of the wicked to as many foolish followers as possible, yes? You keep saying things like wicked and evil, but it's not really. I mean, it helped give me the confidence I needed to approach a girl for the first time in my life. It gives me problem-solving skills to get through difficult situations in daily activities. If anything, it's a useful tool. A tool of wickedness. But it's not wicked, it's... I'm sorry, Jason. That's all the time we have for now. I'll see you at tomorrow's... session. Oh. Okay. Dungeons and Dragons permeates all areas of their lives as they slowly become more and more obsessed with the Devil's Game. Even the little the school that shapes their warped little minds enables them by allowing them a safe haven to play with evil. Gallstaff, you are are you sure you want to decide to haggle with the blacksmith? Yes, I'm using my ring of charms, which adds a plus ten to all convincing rolls. You don't have to remind me. You seem to have convinced the blacksmith to lower the price of the sword. Rock and roll! I use the sword! What do you mean you use it? I swing it around to see if it's magical! What? Y y you can't tell if a sword is magical by swinging it. It's not a- I know! It's not a lightsaber! Well, whatever. However, I'm supposed to find out if it's magical. It's called a detect magic spell. I didn't want to use that up. <laughs> well, say you sleep for six hours after you cast it. Okay. Detect magic. <laughs> it's not magical. Dude! <laughs> he said it was a magical sword. <laughs> he was lying. He said he never tells a lie. He was lying when he said that. <laughs> Dude! Hey, hey, hey! Look who brought the Mountain Dew! Yeah! Right on! Fly by night of Mountain Dew! Mountain Dew for you! Gullstaff, you are standing in a dirt road swinging a very unmagical so sword. You see the strangest sight. A halfling thief is walking towards you singing, Fly by night. 
Nightblade! Hey, hey, hey! It's Nightblade, the Helfling Thief, and he's carrying a 12-pack of Mountain Dew. No way! His character's carrying Mountain Dew, too? If I roll a 10 or above, then yes. 11! <laughs> <laughs> Here's your character, Nightblade. Where's Bacard the Elven Ranger? He's coming, and he's bringing his girlfriend. And your point is... Well, she's gonna want to play. Fine, she can play. Anyone can play. We're a Brown Deer High School endorsed activity with a membership open to the student body. I don't care if Greg Erdman, star quarterback, wants to play. If he brings his own dice. If Sarah Doheny wants to play Advanced Dungeons & Dragons with us, she can play Titania. Ooh. Isn't that your character? It's not my character. It's the DM. Sometimes I have to send non-played characters along with you to provide vital information. Yeah, but it seems like mostly you just end up talking through Titania. Whatever. Now we have a girl to play Titania. Uh, hey, guys. What's up? <laughs> uh, hey, Sarah, do you know everybody here? I'm in bi biology with Scott. Gallstaff! And you're... Uh... He's Nightblade! Jeremy! And Graham! Are you gonna play D&D with us? I don't really know the rules. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, listen, there aren't any rules, Sarah. It, it's a game of the imagination. Oh. Okay. This is your character sheet. Your name is Titania. I don't know what any of this stuff means. I'll help you. <laughs> Okay. Well, it's way after four, so can we get started? Okay. Yeah, okay, uh, whenever you're ready. Nightblade, you've been chatting with Gullstaff in the village, and now you see Picard, the elven ranger, approaching. And Titania! Well, she's not there yet. Where am I? Titania, you are in the darkness. Is there anything here? You're in the darkness. Oh. I turn on the light. <laughs> yeah, Thomas Edison appears in front of you and says, Idiot, I haven't been born yet! <laughs> okay, I, I attack him with my sword. <laughs> what? He's not really there. It's dear magic. What? It's a joke, Sarah. I don't get it. Uh, come on, Graham, you're confusing her. I'm gonna go to the snack machine! Wait, you guys are in the village. Hey, I can still hear you! Let's go to the tavern! Nightblade is wandering off to the tavern! As usual. Uh, Nightblade always goes to the tavern. So... am I still in the darkness? M maybe you should light a torch. Does anyone have another quarter? I light a torch. Very good. You're in a room. But no more helping! What's in the room? Nothing. I go to the door. There is no door. Graham! The character were in a certain place at a certain time at the end of the last adventure. I can't put her on a fluffy cloud just because she's your girlfriend. Well, where is she? If you can't remember, then your character can't remember. Well, my character casts a locate person spell. She's on the fifth sub-level of the Queen of Spiders dungeon, remember? Oh, brother. Am I in the tavern yet? Yes! Does anyone have an extra quarter? Because otherwise I gotta get fun you! Gullstaff! Yes, my friend of steady arrow and ready wit. We have to rescue Titania. I will accompany you. If you kill that blacksmith that sold me this sword. <laughs> yeah, kill the blacksmith. That sounds fun. Don't kill the blacksmith. That's stupid. So what are we doing it wrong now? He told me to kill the blacksmith! I killed the blacksmith! But your character wouldn't do that! What makes you such an expert? The blacksmith turns into a dragon and eats you! What? what? Huh? The Funyuns are stuck in the machine! I'm gonna go home. I'm just in the stupid dark room anyway. Sarah, wait! Don't go! Well, just call me later, okay? Okay. What the hell is your problem? What's yours? I don't know what you're talking about! Yeah, right! Don't get mad at me just because your girlfriend didn't have a good time! For God's sake, this is advanced, Jason! Advance this! Shut up! Oh, that's creative. I'm not worried about my creativity, Jason. I am the Dungeon Master. I control worlds, universes, every potion you drink, I mixed! Every magic item you find, I put it there! Do you remember when you killed that hill giant? I rolled a 20, double damage. You rolled a 19, Jason. I fudged it. That giant would have killed you. 
But I admired your spunk. You wanted it so badly, so I helped you because I wanted to. And I help people when I want to. And right now, you're roasting in a hot belly of a platinum dragon, so why don't you ask yourself where your priority lies? Are we still playing? Yeah. In that case, Gallstaff casts a friendship spell on both of you. Friendship? What kind of gayness is that? Shut up, Night Gade! I'm not gay! I was in the tavern with winches! Yeah, male gay winches! Like you! You guys shut up! Titania is here. Titania? She says, What? How did you get out of the dungeon? I turned my bag of holding inside out, wrapped it around me, and walked through the dungeon walls. You can do that? It's all in the dice. Well, let's go on an adventure. Shouldn't we get Sarah? No. You play Titania. Titania gives you a crystal. She says, anytime you need me, you can use this. Um, are you guys being funny? Ew. There you have it. A frightening look into America's most frightening pastime. Remember that it's not your children's fault that they're being drawn into a satanic world of nightmare. It's their gym teacher's fault for making them feel outcast when they couldn't do one single pull-up. This has been Tales from Your Mom's Basement. Tonight's episode is by... Laura Stahl! Michael Larazzi! Kyle McCarley! The Eric! Live Foley effects by Michael Larazzi and sound design by Kyle McCarley. The original Dungeons & Dragons radio plays, two three to seven minute audio skits, were written and performed by the Dead Alewives. This extended half-hour adaptation was written by Eric Sandburn and directed by Michael Arazi. Tune in next week for another thrilling episode of... Tales from your mom's basement.